Checkpointing is a fault tolerance mechanism used by Spark Streaming. Now recall, we've got some kind of streaming data coming into the system, and we're chunking it off every, say, four seconds and making a little discrete RDD that becomes a part of our DStream. But in general, there's these events, there's this data coming at us all the time. We're doing some kind of computation on that and aggregating some kind of result that we want to look at that's in some sense a summary of the stream. Now, if our application dies or a node goes down or something breaks, then to recover all that, conceptually, we'd have to go back to the beginning of time with respect to that stream and recompute all that data. That would be a bummer because we probably haven't stored that data and it would take a long time. So checkpointing is a mechanism where every so often, Spark will persist data and metadata into the file system. Now, file system, data, metadata, let me define what I mean by those things. First of all, by file system, I mean CFS, the Cassandra file system or the Cassandra implementation of HDFS. So Spark Streaming persists its snapshots into CFS, which is provided for you by DSE by default. Now, metadata, remember, as we're defining our Spark application, we create streams, we create RDDs, we apply transformations to those things, we apply output operations on DStreams and actions on RDDs, maybe we've got Spark SQL queries defined, there's all these things happening, and there's this graph of computations that Spark maintains as a result of that application code. That's the metadata. Pretty lightweight, even if it's a very complex set of computations, a big Spark application, you're not going to be talking about a huge amount of data for it to persist into the file system. But checkpointing also persists some stream data into CFS, and that potentially can be a lot of data. Uh, this is necessary, again, in the event of failure, we have to rewind to the previous checkpoint and replay the data that we've persisted there uh, from the stream. Checkpointing is optional in the case of some transformations, but required in the case of these. If you've got update state by key, count by window, count by value in window, reduce by window, or reduce by key in window, then you're going to have to enable checkpointing. Otherwise, it's an option, and we'll talk about the trade-offs that would influence that decision. Happily, it's not difficult to enable. On the Spark streaming context, we call that checkpoint method and pass it the directory or the path in CFS where we'd like the stuff to be persisted. Then start the application and get on with the computations that you've got to do. Checkpointing is a periodic thing. It's gonna happen every so often, and determining that period is a key engineering decision we've got to make. More frequent checkpointing means recovering from a failure is gonna be quicker. There's less checkpoint stuff to go through when you come back up after having died. However, that's more overhead. Each checkpoint that we do is gonna cause more file IO, just more overhead in general. So we'd rather not do it too often. So that pushes us to infrequent checkpointing, which means less runtime overhead, faster performance of the Spark cluster, but when we do come back up from a failure, it will take us longer. So that's a decision you're gonna to have to make in the context of your application and its failure recovery requirements. If you're looking for a rule of thumb, you should go for five to 10 times the slide interval. Now remember the slide interval is the number of seconds the window moves along each time the transformation runs. In our example, we've been using four seconds for the slide interval because four seconds is our batch interval. That's just a decision we've made for the examples we're using to illustrate things here. Uh, in your case, look at what your slide interval is and you can use that five to 10X as a rule of thumb to get started. In order to recover from a checkpoint, our driver initialization code has to look slightly different. When we're creating a streaming context, we don't just get it, we get or create the streaming context and we pass it the checkpoint dir. So it'll be able to go look at that path in CFS and say, are, are there files persisted here? Am I coming up for the first time or am I waking up after having died and do I have some recovery to do? Now that create streaming context function is a little non-standard. Let me show you the code we have in mind for that. A lot of this is completely standard, just creating the Spark Conf object and getting it all configured, creating the streaming context, setting the batch window. Then on the stream, we do set the checkpoint interval, at this case, 20 seconds, which is five times our batch interval, so that's inside our rule of thumb. And we also, on the streaming context, set the checkpoint directory to turn checkpointing on. So this is an example of a little bit of initialization code that is gonna use checkpointing. It's pretty simple to get it set up. 